Hi, I'm Betty Banjack, and look who's cooking. Today I have a special guest, Barbara Fries, and Barbara is, uh, works with me at the library. Uh, she's downstairs, I'm upstairs, but we get to see each other sometime. And in passing, Barbara comes from Washington State. So you know, Washington State's known for its salmon. Right. And I was watching TV this weekend and watching other cooking shows. There's been a lot of salmon on this time of the year and also Washington State apples. So we'll have something to do with that. But Barbara brought all these wonderful salmon recipes that she's going to share. I want to mention, and I, I forgot to mention the last couple of shows, anytime anyone wants a recipe, I'm sure you're willing to share it with us. So you can just uh, write to the post office box. You'll see it at the end of the show. And you can ask for any of the recipes that we've had on any of this school year. For, I should say school year. We started in January until the end of May. And then we'll be going off for the summer and coming back next fall. So, Barbara, you want to get started with uh, what you want to get started with? We have a couple dishes she's going to do. Okay, well, I thought asparagus is always also kind of a big thing in Washington State. And there's kind of a neat way to cook it that you can do it really quickly and then put it aside and cook whatever salmon you're cooking or whatever other kind of meat you're cooking. And um, it can be ready for whenever you're done. So, Do you, know, do you notice everybody's mother, anyway? Overcooks as well. Yes, they cook definitely. So they're mushy. Yeah. And uh, that was my experience too. Did Sorry, she mom, but them? yeah, my she mother. made them pretty mushy. And my sister, actually, Jenny, who lives in Seattle, told me a perfect recipe for asparagus. Okay, so what are you going to do first? Okay, I what you hot. Uh, it is hot, and what you do is just put like a half of half an inch of water mm. in here. That'll cool down when you get the water in it. And then you, it's very easy to remember. Now, I don't have a measuring spoon, but I just kind of, you know. Well, that's my school of thought. Yeah. Dump it in. Well, it's <laughs> supposed to be a half an inch of salt, a half or a half, a, half a, a teaspoon of salt, sorry. So I'm just going to do that. And then also a half a teaspoon of sugar. That and that might be a little more, a little less. That's I'm the sure. way to cook vegetables now, the salt and the sugar. And then you put the asparagus in. Now, I have cut off the ends of the asparagus. A lot of people believe that you should, you know, with clean your them. hands. Well, I yeah. cleaned them. Do you but clean them with the peeler? No. Oh. Do you? No. Oh, no. I, I, a lot of people say that rather than cutting the ends off, you should Pop break them. them with your hands, but I just cut them with a knife. And, and then people also clean those little bits they cut off, but I don't Oh, bother. no, I, I, I just don't do that. But some. there might be a very good reason why people say that. Well, they, they're very good. They're, they yeah. are fabulous. It gives you more. They're expensive anyway. Yeah. So when you pay what you do, they want to, many people want to get the most out of their, That's right. their money. So what I'm going to do is just bring these to a boil and cook them for like three minutes and then turn them off. And uh, we can prepare the salmon. And then once we're ready to eat, we can turn those on again, boil them for a minute, and they're done. OK, now you, you cover them now as they're cooking? I'm not. Oh, we do have a cover, so that's good. Yes, I can or do that. Or is it after it starts boiling? Well, let's, uh, we could do it now, or we could just wait. We could What's just, your choice? Um, let's not. Did you rest the thing? Let's not. Let's just move them over so that you can, we're going to start preparing the salmon. Okay. I, guess I think we're we having a little cord problem, so it's not going to go okay, much further. Okay, so we'll do this. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is the fillet of salmon. Let's get this up a little bit so when they come down with the camera, they'll okay. get to see it. And this is a very, very easy thing. Um, all you have to do is, oh, well, I've melted some butter. You have to buy some. You have to buy it. You, you have to it. buy it. And are you it's, a fisherman? No, uh. <laughs> although I've known people that are. And... Uh, what you do is you melt butter and add a little garlic. Now, my sister said that I had to have a garlic press and fresh. cut this fresh garlic up and stuff. But as a matter of fact, I could not find a garlic press. So I'm going to use what I usually use, which is this just from the can. And um, I just take a little of this. I like the bottles. And put it <laughs> yeah, in with the butter. I'm a bottle fan. And I like garlic, garlic a lot, so I add bottles, quite a bit of this. Bottles. And I need them for things like that? Yeah. That's yeah. why I like these bottles. That's a good idea. And then I just spoon this over the filet. You need a bigger spoon? No, I think this is perfect, actually. Mm -hmm. Unless you want to use no. that. 
I just thought you might want a bigger one. Well, you're the cook here. Uh, what so. do you look for when you're looking at your salmon in the store? Well, the, uh, it, you, you use about, they suggest, eight ounces per person. And then you look for the most even. Uh, this, you know, is pretty even. It's not uh, like a lot of different heights. It's not variations. In right. Them. So yeah. that's what I look for. And then just, you look for freshness? Is it, oh, uh, definitely. You know, you know, if people think, oh, that's a wonderful fish smell. If it smells like fish, it's already exactly. not too good. You You're not, it's not it. supposed to smell like fish at all. It's supposed to just smell like nothing, really. Okay. So that's what I'm doing right there. And then uh, I, all I'm going to do is cut up a little lemon to put on top of that. There's the garlic we didn't use. Okay. <laughs> anyway. We use it for something else. Yep. We use it for something else. <laughs> And all I do, people may do this differently, I put a little bit of juice from the garlic on the salmon. And then I just cut up some slices and stick it on top. You would see a good thing with lemons or oranges if you're going to cut them and squeeze the juice to leave them out of the refrigerator, which you did. I mean, bringing yeah, everything here. Yeah, that is a really good and it idea. Makes it, easier it, to it certainly does. Get it's the just more juicy. Juice. Also, I try to take the little seeds out when I do my next step here, which is to put them on top of the salmon. And my sister-in-law, Susan, gave me a wonderful grill for Christmas. She gave my husband and I a grill. And I haven't used it very much, but it's just perfect for this sort of thing. I don't know, but does this back is sure smell good? Yeah. Oh, okay, and now we should, that needs to boil for like three minutes, and then we need to turn it off, so it's I don't know. about a minute. It. I've been watching. All righty. And then what all we do with this is it's just got the butter. It seems so simple, but it's so good this way. The butter, the garlic, and the lemon. And then we loosely, I mean really loosely wrap it. Did you not prepare the foil before you put any? I saw yes. you spraying before I the did show. spray some Pam on the foil. They suggested that to me when I read about my grill, and so that's what I've been doing. Anyway, just loosely wrap it up and stick it right on the grill. Are you able to reach over there? Yep. Do you ever do uh, salmon and parchment paper? I haven't done that, no. I'm a parchment paper freak. I love it. It's such an easy cleanup. Well, how do you, what is it? You do wrap you? it the same way. You just have to make sure it's sealed oh. by rolling the edges. Oh. Maybe I'll show you later oh, how I'd to do that. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah, no, I've not heard of that, but that sounds interesting. And then you just rip the paper open and eat it out of the paper. Ooh, it's yeah. So good. Instead of foil. Yeah. So, all right, that's salmon number one. Yeah. Now, you made something all else. Right. Well, the other thing that I enjoy making is salmon loaf. It's an alternative to meatloaf, which is what, you know, we typically have. Um, my son really likes salmon loaf, and he's kind of a picky eater, so it's kind of neat. Um, the question I have, yeah. you told me a story about when you were little and you didn't, want to, you didn't like salmon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So your parents let you get away with it. Why? Well, I, you know, here I came from the Pacific Northwest, and they have all kinds of salmon, but I didn't like fish at all. And so they used to, normally when I didn't like something, they would say, Barb, come on, eat it, eat a little bit, or yeah. eat something else here that's on the table. But when they had salmon, they really wanted to, you know, have it for themselves. They didn't want so to waste it. They didn't want to waste it. They didn't want to worry about me trying some and throwing it away. So they would say, okay, you can have hot dogs tonight, and uh, that's all right, Barb, and uh, we understand that you don't like salmon, so you go ahead and have a hot dog. And, and you like the hot dog better And anyway. I love the hot dog, but it meant that they got more salmon. I figured that out when I was a teenager. It was but sort of a win-win situation yes, for everybody at the table. it was the same with crab and the same with any kind of seafood we had. So. All right, well, you said, oh, wait, all right, salmon well, anyway, loaf. That's salmon right. loaf. So I'm just going to bring a bowl out, and, well, um, you actually can use, I mean, it would be wonderful to use fresh salmon uh, for salmon loaf, but I never do because we never have any leftovers. So uh, I buy, this is red salmon and this is pink salmon. And um, the best thing that you can do is get the red salmon for salmon loaf. It's a little more expensive, but it's worth it just because it's prettier and it somehow I don't know if this is my imagination, but it just tastes a little better. So it probably is a better quality. Isn't yeah, it? but I've also used pink salmon, and it's good too. It just it doesn't. Um, this is the last. It's not quite the same. 
And I don't know what the other is. The other yeah. is they're both cans. They're well, anyway, I tend to oh, use both the, the red can. salmon. This one and says it on the front. This says it up here. What The thing that you have to remember when you're doing this. Now, some people say, I was never one from the school of thought, but they say that uh, because it comes with a little bone in it, and they say that if you crumple, it's soft, and if you crumple it up in your loaf, it's a good source of calcium, but it just kind of grosses me out to have bone just in my salmon loaf. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's how I feel, too. So what I do is I take the bone out, and there might be a little bit left in that you just don't quite get, but I also, there's a kind of a a long bone which you take out plus the skin. I just take that off. I'm not going to do it now because it's kind of greasy. On the salmon fillets, when you buy the fillet like that, yeah. do, you, do you still pick through for bones or do you no. trust the super? I trust the them market? that they know what they're doing, but I do, I'm glad you mentioned that because you do place the skin side down. Okay, and you can get it without skin, but you prefer it with skin. Well, you no, tell me why. you can, I'll tell you why, because salmon steaks cost a whole lot more than the fillet. But isn't it because it adds oil? The skin adds oil and helps it grill. The grill that oil? is, that's true too. Yes, but really, um, it's you can get steaks and it does have the skin around it. Uh -huh. This thing oh, has the skin you down below. You know, below. I just learned to appreciate salmon in the last X amount of years. Before I know. that, I didn't like it either. But Me too. It's really wonderful stuff. I wish I would have eaten it when I was a kid, yeah. but then my Look parents wouldn't have gotten so much. <laughs> okay, well, let's put our food right. together. Um, what I do is I start out with one can of salmon. Now, if you have a big family, you might want to use two, but this is what it looks like when it's all chunked up, you know, taken off out of the can, and the bone is taken out and the skin is taken out. And it's just very much like a meatloaf. Um, I put, okay, well, the, a lot of people think this is a little odd, but I put a few bean sprouts in here. Okay. Just because I like the crunchiness of them. I like bean sprouts. I don't like alfalfa sprouts. Yeah, well, these like are eating beans. dirt. <laughs> yeah. That is my opinion. Yeah. And Everybody then I use, a lot of people use um, like oatmeal, oats, but I like to just use bread. And I put a couple of pieces of bread. I'll be back. I'm just checking to yeah. see if that's hot. Yeah. It is. Excuse anyway, me. Anyway, I was going to. Can you, oh, Barb, get the lid while you're. Bending over because oh yeah this is definitely three minutes it's ready okay we need to turn that off we probably should have turned it off a couple minutes ago but I told no it's based three minutes it. it's been three minutes all right and then we can just let it be and anyway um, I just cut up a little bit of bread I sometimes I use two pieces sometimes I use three just depending on how about you know, if you make fresh people? bread crumbs? Would that be any good? Mm, I'm sure that would be Put wonderful. that like in a food mm. processor, not mm. not make it you know real thin, but that just would chunky. probably be heavenly because it does make a difference. And like I say, a lot of people use oats, and I never have you know oatmeal like oatmeal cereal, but um, I never have done that. Then what you do is you just, just Barbara brought a grocery store with her today. What? I saw her in the parking lot. She brought the grocery store with her. Oh. <laughs> yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I cut up a little bit of red pepper. I probably should have had this all cut up before. I like red pepper. I do too. It tastes good, plus, it looks kind of pretty in the final thing. So. And the tinier, the better, really. Could you make this into like patties, like hamburger? Oh yeah, I'm sure that, that would be very together? good. I never have done that. I did try my hand at crab cakes though, uh, not too long oh. ago, and that was tasty. But no, um, yeah, you could do that. You okay. could even have salmon burgers actually, when you think about it. Yeah. But fill peppers. You could. <laughs> yeah. You could make up all the recipes. You could fill peppers with it. Ooh, you really, you could do that too. Okay. Anyway, what then I also. have this against the grill, which is probably done. Then I put about like a half of an onion in there. And it depends on how much you like onion. You might, you know, want to do a little bit less, or some people even put a whole onion in there. Anyway. 
Do you use a special onion or just onion? I suppose that, you know, it was neat because when I came here to this side of the United States, I learned about onions, and I really didn't know there were that many kinds. We, you know, we have Walla Walla sweets, but we didn't, ha you guys have a lot of sweet onions that I wasn't aware of, but it would probably be good to, to do sweet, some kind of sweet onion, but it really doesn't matter. Now, onions have taken a big change over the last couple of years. They've changed really? the names of what was once once a Bermuda onion, now is another color, and yeah. so they evidently the uh, changed. Well, I remember when I was had been here about a week, and I brought onions up to the register, and she said, yeah. "Well, what kind of onion is that?" And I said, "I don't know." Are you going to put green pepper in it too? Yes. Okay, hurry up. All right. Okay. <laughs> I'll just put a little bit of that in there. You can put it all in. All right. you, I'll put it in, and you right. can. Get ready a little with bit your of how, how are we doing on time, Betty? Oh, we're fine. All right. We'll put a little bit of um, green onion in, too, just for it adds flavor and it's also pretty. Barbara and I have a problem. We get talking and we lose track of time. <laughs> it's bad. All right. Now, you could cut that up smaller, but I didn't. All right, now. It smells very good, too. Um, what else? What else? What else? Oh, a little bit of, I put half and half. You can just use milk. Just oh, yeah. a little bit. It's probably like a half a cup or something like that. And then eggs. Right there they put are. One or two eggs. I'm going to put two. And then what I do is I mush it up with my hands, yeah. and I don't know if that's well, fine we're going to have to you wash your hands show. afterwards, aren't we? Yeah. Um, and then let, here's a loaf pan. And I'm just going to spray this too. Okay. We have towels. All right. Good. <laughs> I'll just use paper towels too. But I just mush it up, just like a meatloaf. It's very that's much exactly like a meatloaf, right. but it's a, a neat different, you know, it's an alternative to meatloaf. Why do you put in the bean sprouts? Cause, just because you like them. I, many years ago, when I first learned about salmon loaf, I just, I don't know, I had some bean sprouts and I stuck them in there and they were so tasty to me that I just kept doing it. And so I just kind of like them. I've never heard of anyone else really putting bean sprouts in, but maybe people who have had mine. I maybe the bean sprout association will... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. It take your recipe from you. Maybe so. Maybe not. Anyway. And I just put it in the loaf pan just like you would, you know, any kind of thing. And then what I do, I put this in the oven at 350, and I cook it for about a half hour, and then I stick some Swiss cheese, which is odd, too. That's kind of my recipe as well. And I put Swiss cheese on there and then a few dollops of sour cream at the very end. And so. Can I get the one out of the? Uh... Yeah, you could if I hope that the cheese is melted. I don't want to burn myself. Okay. Take that one. Okay. I'll get another one. All right. The cheese As you is... all know, that we do work out of the high school television uh, station and not a kitchen, so we have a lot of obstacles to overcome all the time. Like, where do we get electricity for four things? <laughs> but we did it. Yep. And so there's cheese on the top. I didn't add the sour cream yet, but... Okay. I'm um, take this one. Okay. And uh, do we have everything we're going to serve up? Oh, you know what I did? I forgot. I did forget this. I forgot to add dill basil and thyme to my loaf. I do that. Well, do that. I mean, you can just add whatever one you want in there, right? Yes, yes. I okay. usually add all three, so. Yeah, that happens. I often, then it's a new way to do it, you know, tell them, yeah. oh, I did it that way on purpose. No. Okay, we're going to have, let me put this all on a plate. Sure, I can. Let me just. I'm going to move the asparagus back here. And when you're ready to serve your asparagus, all you have to do is get it boiling for one minute, turn it off, and it's done. And here we have some plates. What do you think? Which one? This big oh. for all three? And then we'll show you this uh, okay. Washington State apple cake. Okay. Uh, 
need a, do we have a spatula or something to? Uh, no. Okay, then what we'll do. Yes, yes. Is there some here? No. Yes. And this would be good to have a few dollops of um, sour cream on. When you put it on the plate? Yeah. Oops. It's not a very big, uh, I think you're going to have to do it crosswise. Like. <laughs> then I'm going to open this. up this. Why don't we leave it in there Okay. until we get ready to eat. We'll put it All nearby. Right. And uh, why don't you want to get the, um, your salmon steak. Oh, off. yes. And just let me tell you that you just put a few of the, a few little dots on here like this. And it is so very good. And sometimes I even heat that for about 10 minutes at low. You want me to put right. it back in the oven? Yeah, that might be very good. For about yeah. two minutes. Yeah, just for a couple <laughs> minutes. So the cheese melts and, the, and then we'll see how our uh, salmon is. Ooh, that looks really good. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. Whoops. Is that finished or you need another? We need another couple of minutes. And I'm, like I said, I'm getting used to this grill. And sometimes, it, you know, new grills, you have to watch out because it heats up a little faster than you think it's going to. This, um, this does look pretty good. You don't want it to be like too white on the edges, which these, this is pretty pink. So it turned out really well. But this we have needs some to cook more. up here a little bit, a little bit longer. So I'm just going to close it up. Here's the one that you made earlier. Right. And that is beautiful. And we'll put this on here. Maybe we can put the asparagus right next right, to yeah. it. So. Go ahead. Sure it's dish. I'm just. <laughs> All right. Here we'll do this. And your salmon, you want it to be flaky, kind of opaque. Mm, that looks really good. And then we can just put maybe a little bit of asparagus on the side. It's shut it. off. I shut it off. And then why don't you go for your apple cake if you have time. Yeah, I have that time. And it kind of, the apple cake kind of lends itself to this because it, you need a little sweet something, like fruit or something. Isn't that nice? Oh, it's gorgeous. And lemon? Of course, you take the lemon, of lemon off. Oh, that would be nice, huh? Just a little piece of lemon. Okay. It'd be very pretty. Um, you, of course, want to take the lemon off before you... Why? Before you... Um, People like lemon. They eat lemon. Oh, that's I true. I have a friend that eats anything. That's true. But cream corn. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> and I have here, I, I made, before we came on the air, it's a, an apple cake. It's a Washington State apples, and I have some, what, diff mm, two different kinds sure of Washington do. State. Are those Red Delicious? Red Delicious oh, and Granny wow. Smith. And they're both from Washington State. Wow. And it's an Great. easy cake. I think the only thing you must make sure that you grease your pan really good for some reason to come out. Yeah. And you can put your apples in there anyway. They could be chunky. They could be almost applesauce. Did you use the peels in that cake? Yes. Oh, it has wow. red. You'll see little red flecks in there. Oh, and I thought neat. for the holidays, you did red and green. <laughs> you oh, have little red neat. and green flecks. So we're, let's see. Is this our one and only spatula? I guess we need That's to neat. get a spatula for school. It has nuts, or like mm. you don't have to put nuts in it. Um, you want to taste? Oh, I would love a taste. But it is neat. I see little red things in there now, and green, and I don't want to taste of that. That's my portion. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a little, the apple cake here. Let me just taste a little bit of it. And as I said, I don't. It's hard. You mm. can't really see it, but mm -hmm. I left. I use red apples. That is so good. And I left it, you know, one mm. there. You can take them off, too. Mm, that's really can. good. This is a good time of the season for Washington apples because it was autumn and now it's spring. It, the worst time to buy them is in the summer because they were picked the year before. Most people don't realize that. They don't pick them all year. Right. So we have that and we have this. Mm. And I want to taste the salmon. Mm, please do. <laughs> Any reason I took this job? <laughs> The, the crew and I have a deal day, too. They get to eat. If they film, they get to eat. 
Mm. Well, I hope they like salmon. This young lady says she likes asparagus. Yeah, so yeah. I know Mark, hoping. our director, Mark Strom. He likes. Mm. You'll love this, Mark. So I. Um, you no. might also want to salt the asparagus a little bit, too. Well, anything. I think salt and pepper. Yeah, and also oh, oh, even the, the fish. That probably is a good idea. So I'm really glad you were able to come today. Well, thank you, Betty, and for to show, having me. To, this, is, this must be the time of the year for salmon. Is, it, is there a season for salmon? Oh, anymore there's a season I, for everything. I but. think. I don't know the answer to that. But it's, it's really good. And if, again, if you want the recipe of the chips, how Barbara puts it together, or if you want the apple cake, this is really easy. And it makes a... It's just not an easy cake to make and put in the lunch boxes and, you know, or to have when someone's coming, freeze. There's Definitely. never enough to freeze, but it's, I always look at it that way. And so... And again, too, it really does make a difference when you put the uh, uh, herbs and stuff into the... The loaf. The loaf, which We're, I forgot Oh, the loaf's do. back in the oven. Oh, oh maybe okay. it's done. All right. We'll do, oh, it's a quickie. It's sort of melted. So well, here's the whole, whole Shipping. thing. Can we? I'm going to just move this here. Okay. Can we get this whole thing in? So you can see everything. These guys are doing such a great job. There it is. All right. Sort of the oh, salute to Washington State. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thank you for coming. Thank you so and much. And thank you for me. coming. And we'll see you soon. So remember, look who's cooking. <laughs>